it's me, Brizzy, and today I'm going to try to turn myself, Brizzy, me, into a playable character in Dungeons & Dragons. This game is largely inspired by one one-shot I played in where my friend Cam decided to play as himself in the game. He played himself, Cam, a human fighter who was transported through a magical wardrobe into the Forgotten Realms and somehow was stuck in this Dungeons & Dragons universe, and it was hilarious. Definitely makes for some pretty easy role-playing, I guess. So I thought it would be fun to try to create myself if I exist in the world of Dungeons and Dragons, not as a separate character, but as me, the real, real me. I try to get as real with it as possible that is also still fun. And while I'm doing it, it could also double as a little introduction to how to make a character for those of you who are new to Dungeons and Dragons. So let's give it a go. So I have pretty much always used the website D&D Beyond to make my characters. Not sponsored, obviously, just a really easy platform to use that they have like drop down menus and stuff to plug in that makes it super easy. You don't have to go looking a bunch of stuff up. So I'm gonna use D&D Beyond today. So let's go ahead and create a character. I think I'm best off going with the standard build. Why not? So automatically it says Brizzy's character, but you know what we're gonna do? Done. <laughs> There's my name. Sure, we can upload a picture. Normally you have to, you know, try to find a portrait of your fantasy character, but you know what I can do? I can just grab a picture of myself from my desktop and just plop it on in there, cause it's me, it's literally me. For sources, I'm going to turn on everything just so we have all the options. The rest of this first page, advancement type, hit point type, prerequisites, encumbrance, all of this are stuff that you should ask your dungeon master about when you're making your character. But since we're just making a character, Character for fun right now. Don't need to worry about it, so we're just gonna leave it as is and move on to the next page, which is race. Now, obviously, if we were being the most realistic with this, I would just pick human, but where's the fun in that, huh? If you're just using a free version of D&D Beyond, you have access to all of the most basic races, but I also have access to some paid options, such as Changeling from the Eberron setting. A Changeling can shift its face and form with a thought as a form of artistic and emotional expression. And not only its face can they change, but their voice. You see where I'm going with this? They change their voice, they change their skin, their shape. They're metamorphmagus, but also with the voice. So ideal world, my dream. It's like cosplay and voiceover all together. I love it. This gorgeous picture is apparently what I look like when um, I'm not changed into any form. I mean, I guess you don't really know that I don't look like that, do you? Hmm. As a changeling, I also have my charisma score increased by two, which means pretty good with people. And I can increase either my dexterity or my intelligence by one. So do I want to increase how agile and dexterous I am or how smart I am? As the Ravenclaw, I think I'm obviously going with intelligence. I have the ability to change appearance as an action, including my height, weight, facial features, sound of my voice, coloration, hair length, sex, and any other distinguishing characteristics. Beautiful, stoked about that. Changeling instincts means I gain proficiency with two of the following. I think I'm a rather insightful person, if I do say so myself. I have a pretty good judge of character, basically, is what that boils down to. I'm good at reading situations and what to expect from them. So I'm gonna pick insight for the first one. Deception, intimidation, and persuasion are all pretty hard to pick from. I feel like persuasion is the least malicious of the three. So I'm gonna go with persuasion. I get unsettling visage, which basically means if someone tries to attack me, I can just be like, blah, blah, make a crazy face and they get a little freaked out and it's harder to attack me. You guys are always leaving comments about the weird faces I make in my videos. So it seems appropriate. Divergent persona means I can gain proficiency with any of these tools. But right now I'm stuck between dice set, disguise kit, and painter supplies. See, disguise kit sounds like it would make sense, right? It's like the makeup and cosplay stuff, but I'm a changeling. Why do I need it? So I'm gonna go with dice set because right now I'm so freaking obsessed with Dungeons and Dragons. I'm probably pretty all right at it by now. Languages. You can speak, read, and write common and two other languages of your choice. There are so many languages in here, but I love weird dichotomies in life. I liked acting as the perfect, innocent, cute, bubbly, and also the super dark, emo, goth, evil side of things. So I like both. So I wanna do a thing here where one of my 
language is, is celestial, which is the language of angels, basically. And the other is infernal, which is the language of devils. But I think it conveys my personality of liking both the light and dark side of things. Now I get to choose a class. Now for this make myself a D&D character challenge, I'm gonna choose to make myself a fifth level character. Now if you have multiple levels in a character and your dungeon master is okay with it, you can choose multiple different classes. You just choose how many levels you want for each one added together to make five. So for me, you know, first I want to go wizard because I just feel like I am a witch deep down. For those who don't know, Dungeons and Dragons has sorcerer, warlock, and wizard as different classes, very different all of them. But sorcerer is more like, oh, you're born with magic and it just kind of happens out of you. Warlock means you kind of made a pact with the devil and they gave you magic. And wizard is more traditional Harry Potter sense. You have a spell book, you're learning, you learn to do the magic and you do it because you learned how to do it. My Ravenclaw brain is telling me to pick wizard because they get proficiency in intelligence and wisdom saving throws. Intelligence and wisdom. Thank you, Ravenclaw, let's go. And I just really want to do magic, guys. I know this isn't the most realistic if I'm literally making myself in Dungeons and Dragons. I would probably just pick fighter if I were gonna be realistic and not give myself magic, but where's the fun in that? I am a witch in my heart, okay? Out of my five levels, I'm going to pick two for wizard, and for my extra wizard proficiencies, I'm going to choose investigation, because I love a good mystery and looking into things and peering through, and I'm just a very, a very curious bee. And arcana, because do you realize how many times I've read Harry Potter? I know a lot about magic. For my arcane tradition, which basically means which wizard subclass are you gonna pick. There are a bunch of different schools. There are schools like divination, enchantment, evocation, necromancy, transmutation. I'm going to go with illusion. I think illusion makes sense because cosplay and makeup and hair, along with voice acting and just creating an illusion of being someone else. And I'm a changeling. I feel like having more illusion magic as a changeling makes sense. Now, I'm going to multi-class, and as my second class, I'm going to choose Bard. A bard is an inspiring magician whose power echoes the music of creation. Basically, a bard is an entertainer, usually a musician, maybe an actor or a dancer. I'm going with bard because I'm an entertainer, I'm an actor. Uh, sometimes I sing things, it makes sense to me. It's also more magic, which is fun. <laughs> now for my bard class features, I can choose a musical instrument and they don't have piano as an option. Sad day, but I guess that would be quite weird, wouldn't it? Roaming the countryside, going on adventures, and tugging your piano around with you. They do have bagpipes, which is tempting just for the hilarity. Weirdly, I think I'm gonna go with horn because I love ska music and I love brass instruments put into music. I just, I love the sound of brass instruments, so we're going with horn. <laughs> I don't think I've ever played a horn in my life other than like an old hunting horn, like <laughs> Dungeons and Dragons me is gonna learn how. And I get to choose a skill. I'm gonna choose animal handling because puppies. And I'm going to give myself three levels of bard. So technically I am more bard than I am wizard. So now that I am third level, I get to choose a bard college, which is like the school of magic for the wizard, but for the bard. There's the college of glamor, college of lore, college of swords, college of valor, and college of whispers. I like the idea of college of glamor, but I'm going to go with college of lore because I feel like that is the geekiest one. That is like what the nerd would pick, the studying of all of the stories and telling everyone the stories and it's like I know all the Harry Potter books let me tell you about them <laughs> you know expertise this means I get to be extra good at a couple of things I'm going to choose animal handling because puppies and insight because one very useful skill to have two sounds more accurate to me than investigation or persuasion now for the crazy part ability scores and today we're gonna roll my ability scores the real way your ability scores aka how good you are at different things can be chosen in several different ways so ask your dungeon master how they want to do it most of the games I have played in I was told to roll four d6s that is the six-sided dice aka the standard cube die and then you take out the lowest one and add the rest together and that is one ability score so you do that six times you have your six numbers and then you plug in those numbers to whichever score you want I'm gonna film on my phone here so you guys can see what's happening here goes the first roll 
Okay, take out the lowest number, the one, and that is five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So I'm just gonna write down the eleven and I'll put it wherever I want at the end. And now we roll them again. Oh, this looks much nicer. We got four, five, six, seven, eight, plus six is fourteen. All right, fourteen. Now let's see what we got next. Take out the lowest, which is three, and we get five plus six, which is 11, plus three is 14 again. 14. Let's try this three more times. All right, take out the two, and we've got eight plus six. 14, are you kidding me? Wow, we're just becoming a 14 kind of person. That's fine. Let's try a fifth roll. Take out the one, and we've got, great, we got four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Not awesome. That's fine. Final roll we get. Take out the one. Are you kidding me? Four? Oh no! Oh no! I've never rolled this awfully. Are you kidding? Okay, to be fair, I think every DM I've ever played with would be like, okay, roll one more and then replace the four with that. But you know what makes for hilarious role playing? Terrible stats. Four is god awful. Okay, you know what? We're just gonna live with it. All right, so here's our scores all laid out. This is not where they're landing. I just wrote them down so I wouldn't lose track of them. If you're new, I'll just give you a little summary of what each one is and what they're good for. Strength, obviously, is just for being strong, having big muscles. You can push stuff. You can jump high. You can hit things hard. It's good to be strong, especially if you're doing a lot of up close and personal fighting. Dexterity, how nimble and lithe are you? Are you sneaky and acrobatic? Then maybe Maybe you've got good dexterity. Constitution, how hardy and tough are you? Basically, if you chug some poison, are you gonna make it out alive? Or can you just fight it off because you got the body of a god? I don't know. Constitution is helpful to give you a lot of hit points so you can take a good beating without going unconscious. Intelligence, how brainy are you? How well-educated and good at retaining information are you? Intelligence is helpful if you need to try to recall something, identify something, investigate investigate something, learn about something, or do magic that involves your brain. Wisdom is clearly easy to confuse with intelligence, but the difference is wisdom is more experience-based rather than straight-up knowledge-based. The comparison I like to use that I did not make up is that intelligence is knowing that a tomato is a fruit. Wisdom is knowing not to put a tomato in a fruit salad. Basically, intelligence, you remember things, you learn things, you hold information well. Wisdom, you make good choices. Charisma, how good are you with the humans? How good are you at persuading people to get what you want? This could have to do with how good you are at talking to people, how good looking you are, how good of a performer you are. I don't think I'm particularly great socially, but I'm going to try to put a lot of stats into charisma because that is what I need for performing as a voice actor. Now, as a changeling, I get an automatic racial bonus of plus one to intelligence and plus two to charisma, so that is convenient. So my biggest score are my three 14s. So I'm gonna put one into charisma, switch that over here, and I'm gonna put my second one into intelligence because I need that to be a good wizard. And my last 14, I'm kind of stuck between dexterity and wisdom because if I'm being realistic, I think I'm probably more wise than I am dexterous, but I don't know, I have been getting into some kickboxing lately, you know? And Wisdom isn't necessarily as helpful to me as a wizard or a bard. But I think I'm actually pretty good at dodging things. I have decent hand-eye coordination, so I'm gonna do the weird cheat thing and uh, leave my 14 in dexterity and switch my 11 from strength over to 11 in wisdom. And then I cannot have a four constitution. I would die. I would straight up have like one hit point, one hit, and I'm down. So I'm going to give myself four strength and 10 constitution. This means that my modifier for strength is minus three. Whenever I roll a d20, a 20-sided die for a strength roll, if I'm trying to push a rock or something, I've got a minus three to whatever I roll. Great. I don't know if I could even hold up a sword at this point. Thank goodness I'm a wizard. <laughs> but with the racial modifiers, it does mean that my total charisma score ends up to be 16, which is great. And my total intelligence comes out to 15. So my 
modifier for intelligence is plus two and my modifier for charisma is plus three. And those are really what's most important to me as a bard wizard. I am weak as a sheet of paper, but it's fine. We're gonna move on because at least it'll be funny. Now I get to choose a character background. This is what your character was up to before they started this adventure life. In here, I see entertainer. I see anthropologist. I see criminal spy. I was abnormally into spy kids as a child. Gladiator, folk hero, haunted one. None of those sound quite accurate to me. I'm gonna go with cloistered scholar. It sounds a little intense, but before my current life, I was super into school and university and studying and I'm a Ravenclaw. What can I say? For the background of cloistered scholar, it says as a child, you were inquisitive when your playmates were possessive or raucous. True. In your formative years, you found your way to one of Faerun's great institutes of learning. Yes, I went to college. It counts. Where you were apprenticed and taught that knowledge is a more valuable treasure than gold or gems. Yes, heck yes, Ravenclaw, let's go. As a cloistered scholar, I get to choose another skill proficiency. I get history and I'm gonna go with nature because I definitely know a lot more about nature than religion. And I get to choose two more languages. Are you kidding me? Woo, given my history with lore and geekdom, I think draconic and elvish are the most classic ones that make sense for me. I love me some Lord of the Rings elves and I love me some Game of Thrones dragons. Mwah. So we're going with Draconic and Elvish. Those also just tend to be pretty useful in most basic campaigns. And last but not least, starting equipment. We're just gonna pick the basic ones that D&D Beyond recommends that come with your class. So I could pick a quarterstaff or a dagger. Quarterstaff in theory does better damage, but I am not strong at all. And at least you can throw daggers. So I'm gonna pick a dagger. Also, I don't think I have any quarterstaffs, but I definitely have a lot of knives in my house. A component pouch or an arcane focus. So basically a pouch of like, spell ingredients or a little magical item that kind of gives you the source of the magic. I'm gonna go with arcane focus because one of the options is a wand. I mean, I just had one within arm's reach of me. Obviously I'm picking a wand. <laughs> and then either a scholar's pack or an explorer's pack. That's hard because definitely like five years ago, it'd be a scholar's pack, you know, like my backpack full of books and stuff for school. But now I have a zombie bag instead. I have more of an explorer's pack on hand. So I'm gonna go with explorer's pack, which might surprise you, but it's accurate. And then I just automatically get a spell book and the scholar's robes of your cloister, Ravenclaw, a writing kit, a borrowed book on the subject of your current study, Harry Potter, and a pouch containing 10 gold pieces. Add starting equipment. And here we have it. This is me as a D&D character. <laughs> Changeling level two wizard, level three bard. I love it. Strength modifier minus three, dexterity plus two, constitution plus zero, intelligence plus two, wisdom plus zero, charisma plus three. Four. Holy cow, would you look at these proficiencies and expertises? I know if you're new to D&D, this probably doesn't make a lot of sense, but this is a little crazy to look at. Basically, when I roll a D20, I get to add this bonus to whatever I roll. If I'm trying to flip off something and I roll a 10, I get to add three and then I get 13. And if I see a cute puppy on the side of the road and I try to make friends with it and I roll a 19, I get to add six. I mean, I gotta get 25! So there we have it. That's me as a D&D character. If you want to play as this character yourself, you can. Whether you want to literally play Brizzy or if you want to completely make up your own personality and name and stuff, you can do that too. I'm leaving a downloadable link of the character sheet in the doobly-doo down below so you can just download it and use it in your own game. And I definitely encourage any of you to try this, whether you're new to D&D or if you're a veteran and you've never made yourself as a literal D&D character, it's real fun. Try it, challenge yourself to make a level five version of yourself as a playable character in Dungeons and Dragons and please tweet it to me. I would love to see it. If you think this is inaccurate to me as a Dungeons and Dragons character, I would love to hear why you think so and uh, happy gaming. I'll see you next week with a brand new video.